Hello, everyone. I'm James Milan. Welcome to this select board debate as part of our election coverage for 2023. Uh, we have three familiar faces here. Before we get going, though, I just want to say that we at, at ACMI here uh, are, have worked hard to put this together, and we're really, really honored to do so. Um, we have just two missions at ACMI to educate people around all things videographic and to provide value to the town. We think that's what we're doing here, and we appreciate our candidates being here. I am looking at, from left to right, at, from the order on the ballot, Len Diggins and John Leone and Diane Mahan. Good to see you, James. All familiar faces, as I said. Um, we will, here's the format for the debate. We will start with two minute opening statements from each of the candidates. Then I will ask one question to all three, same question, and they will ha each have two minutes to respond. Then I have three questions right here that I will pull out randomly and ask to each alternatively. Um, the person I asked the question of will have two minutes to respond and then each of the other two one minute of rebuttal time. And we will finish with a round of questions where the candidates themselves ask a question of the other two. Uh, the way that that will go is that the person asking the question has 30 seconds to do so, then the two respondents have two minutes each, and finally the person who asked the question can rebut with one minute response. We will finish with closing statements and we will be done. So let's get going. Um, we randomly, just before going on air, we randomly chose the order of the opening statements. We will hear from Len first and then John. It turns out right in the order in which they're seated, Len, then John, and then Diane. So without further ado, Len, your opening statement, two minutes. Thanks, Thanks to ACMI and everyone involved with putting on this debate. I welcome the opportunity to convey my enthusiasm for continuing to work with my colleagues on the select board, the new town manager who we are in the process of electing, town staff, and of course you, my fellow residents. First and foremost, I am a resident of Arlington and I always try to see issues from the resident's point of view. When you have a problem or a question that I can't solve or answer on my own, I am happy to point you in the right direction. When you have an idea, I try to work with you to pursue it in a way that is pragmatic and productive. My goal is to support you, but I also try to be honest and realistic about the likelihood of success. That said, I like embracing bold ideas and aiming for lofty goals. For example, can we transform Broadway and East Arlington into an innovative corridor that is not only an economic engine, but a magnet for new housing developments and the company new growth? In the process, can we create housing so that more of those who work for the town will also have the opportunity to live here? Can we also strive to create neighborhoods that make walking and cycling safer, facilitate the use of public transit, make possible the use of shared vehicles, and utilize more sustainable forms of energy such as solar and geothermal to a greater degree? The answer to all these questions is a resounding yes, but I alone can't make them happen. What I can do is encourage those of you who want a future that resembles this vision and work with you and my select board colleagues, the town manager and staff, in town meeting to create the policies and incentives that will lead to such a future. I am excited about the possibility of having a second term on a select board and another three years to build on the great momentum that exists in our town. Thank you. Thank you. John. Good evening, my name is John Leone. I made the decision to run after many supportive decisions, discussions with my wife and family. My interest in running is based on 29 years of actively serving Arlington Town Government and observing the large and small decisions that have delivered us to this point. That experience has given me an excellent window into the operating dynamics of our town over several generations of committees, boards, town managers, and select boards. The select board is responsible for setting short and long-term town policies. Arlington has done very well over the past 25 years, as evidenced by our AAA bond rating. This was accomplished with short-term management, long-term planning, and prudent financial oversight. However, our continued success is not a foregone conclusion. My concerns are policy decisions facing the board and our town. It is time to reassess and set our priorities and decisions making for where we want to be in five to 10 years. As we emerge from the pandemic turmoil, I believe that the focus on long-term planning is imperative and critical for maintaining a sustainable community for both new and old residents alike. I will ensure that long-term thinking, planning, and policy decisions remain squarely on the table of the select board. I will bring an energy and a direction of purpose to the board that is sorely needing at this time. I have been and will continue to be, with your vote, a listener, a friend, 
and a voice for all residents of Arlington. As we work together to make Arlington the best it can be, we can do better. Thank you. I'm John Leone. Diane. Thank you, James. Hi, my name is Diane Mahan, and I'm a candidate for re-election for Arlington Select Board on Saturday, April 1st, and I respectfully request one of your two votes. I have had the privilege of working for you, the residents of the town of Arlington, as a select board member and also as a town meeting member. I've been proud of my record and service, and I'm just as excited as I was the first time I was a candidate. Arlington is a great community due to the involvement of its citizens and our commitment to continue to grow and adapt with the issues before us. We are facing many challenges, and I hope to continue to work towards solutions as a member of the select board. I have learned one of my best qualities as a select board member is to really take the time to listen to all of our residents and always keep an open mind to finding solutions and re-examining if there is something we can do better together. I grew up here in Arlington, attending Arlington Public Schools, the Hardy Junior High East, now the Gibbs, in AHS, and was fortunate enough, along with my husband, to raise our three children here who also attended Arlington Public Schools. I am seeking re-election to the select board as it has been a long-standing passion of mine to help all the residents in the town. My number one job has been and will continue to be constituent services and the wide umbrella that that encompasses. I've always tried to make Arlington's local government understandable and accessible to everyone. There is no issue too small or too complicated that I will not devote all of my energy to help resolve. I want to continue to work on the important issues facing Arlington, such as climate change, climate resiliency, the preservation of the Mugar wetland, restoration of the clean Alloy Brook, housing and affordability, transportation and public safety, and diversity and equity. And I'm committed on working to find the right solution for everyone. I love Arlington, I love this job, and I hope along with my candidates, John and Len, we're able to give you a taste of what we would do as a member of the select board, and again, I respectfully request one of your two votes on Saturday, April 1st. Thank you. Thank you to all three of you. And um, proceeding, the f a reminder, this is one question going to all three of you, and you have two minutes to respond each. Um, and coincidentally, we're going by the order of the ballot for this, so it will be just the same. We will start with you, Len, and I also just want to apologize for the length of the question. This is the longest one that you'll have to listen to. There are a whole lot a whole host of compelling issues for the next select board to tackle, including a town manager search, with, which at the moment is ongoing, a potential override, our designation as an MBTA community and, the impact on, and its impact on housing, and much more. Which of the many concerns strikes you personally as the most urgent, and what would you have the select board do to address it? Let. Well, the most urgent it, uh, well, the, the most urgent need is clearly the the, the town manager search, you know, uh, and 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 so we we are in the final stages of that. I mean, what's become really apparent to me is just the, how much the town manager sets the tone I mean, for the dynamic, not only within the town but also between the select board I mean, and and the the. The town manager, but also the 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 rest of the staff, because we, to a certain extent, we we well not to a certain extent actually absolutely me the town manager um, is the person that controls the staff. I mean, uh, and and the select board we, really goes through the town manager uh, when the select board a member of the select board wants to work uh, with the staff. I mean, and and we generally me the relationship between the select board and the town manager is a friendly one, you know, and so you will talk with the town manager and and if there's a, a issue that you want to work with with the staff, you get the permission to do so and, and, and usually you have a good relationship or a good outcome to whatever you want to do with the, the staff. Uh, and so it's important that you build that relationship with the town manager. I mean, in the case of Adam Chapdelaine, we, we met uh, once a week I mean, on average I mean, for 30 minutes. I mean, it was a regular meeting I mean, every Monday morning at 8.30. I've continued that with Sandy Pooler. I mean, my intention is to continue that with the next town manager. And what you, happens when you do that is that you build a relationship with the town manager so that you understand that person, they understand you, so that when something comes up, you're not trying to develop the relationship. You already have the relationship. So, so I mean, that's what strikes me as the, the, 
the most urgent and the most important, I mean, the most exciting is a whole other issue, and maybe we'll get to that later in the debate. Okay, thank you very much. John. That's quite the laundry list. But I uh, think that the, right now the most urgent issue facing the select board is the town manager and the hiring of a competent, capable town manager. We've had various hosts of town managers over the past several decades. Um, some good, one or two were duds. We would hope not to replate, repeat that again. But the town manager is directly responsible to only one group of people, that is the select board. So the select board has to be very careful in who they choose, and make sure the qualities of the upcoming town manager are strong in personal relationships, in personal working through the um, human services uh, personnel department, being able to hire good staff throughout the town. But the manager is, has to be able to report to the select board on not just the financial aspects of the town and the day-to-day -day operations, but what's going on with the department heads. We have had various troubles with various departments. That treasurer's department was a disaster over the last few years. We've lost all of our employees except for one, and some of them are long-term employees. The, um, we've had a problems with the building department, with ethics commissions. These are things the town manager should have been on top of and reporting to the select board of these personnel problems. So when we hire a new person, we've got to make sure that person is capable, strong, and able to do the job. Arlington has a very strong town manager act, and our town manager is the top dog in the town, so to speak. He's basically the, the uh, powers of a mayor, but he, he or she will report to the select board, and the select board has to keep a tight rein on that in the future. Thank you. Diane. Um, thanks to Len and John for covering uh, the town manager. Uh, we're at the end of the process. This is my fourth town manager search process. Um, and since that will be uh, the final interview on March 27th, and I think my colleagues to my right have covered that enough. For me, the most important issue facing the town of Arlington is sort of twofold, financial and environmental. And, and that sort of branches off. Financial because money really fuels um, what the town of Arlington is and what the community in Arlington has said, this is what's important to us. This is what we need. Um, this is what we'd like and this is what we'd want. We have an, an impending override. I've attended long-range planning um, committee meetings with my colleague, uh, Mr. DeCourcy, who's the chair, and Mr. Diggins is also now the representative there. And all the town think tanks financial have gotten together to really stretch out every time I've been a co-chair on a rebuild campaign, an override successful campaign, and it, it seems that's facing us. And when I say environment, I mean environment in terms of uh, climate control, climate resiliency, but also in terms of our diversity, equity, and inclusion. You know, what does it mean to grow up in Arlington, to live in Arlington, to work in Arlington? Um, I want to make sure that environment is inclusive and welcoming, that when we need to band together for an issue, whether it's a financial issue, whether it's an issue of what we recently had with the uh, anti-Semitic language at one of our schools, and um, to come together and say when things are wrong and, and support each other. You know, we're there for the good times, but we're also there for the bad. Because I've heard that a lot in terms of people that the town could do a better job, like any city or town across the state or the nation, in terms of really sitting back and listening. That's an easy L word, but it's hard to do. But then implementing and, and, and just see if you can make it more welcoming. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we'll proceed to the next round of questions. Again, three questions. First one will be directed to you, John, and you will have two minutes to respond, and then each of the other two, one minute of rebuttal. So pulling it out, it is. <clears throat> Do you agree or disagree with the statement, Arlington needs to work much harder to attract businesses? If you agree, list what initiatives you would propose and champion in this area, and if you disagree, please explain your reasoning. I 100% agree with that statement. Arlington has a very small business district um, in compared to the size of the residential. Uh, it's about 95, I think it's about 95% residential, 5% district, basically along our two main corridors. We have 
a problem with empty storefronts and the problem with there is the, nothing, nothing the town can really do about that because they're privately landlords but the um, planning department economic development person who has recently been replaced I believe can do much more to bring more businesses into town assist those businesses in getting financial need that they want, working with the local banks for SBA loans, et cetera, and just generally working with the Chamber of Commerce to promote our businesses. We, prior to the pandemic, we had a flourishing restaurant scene. Post-pandemic, it's basically dead. We have to do something as a town to reestablish that. And I believe that what we could do is work through the Chamber and get that more effectively financed if we can devote some money towards it that would be wonderful there's um, it without a thriving business community we are become a bedroom community and there's no real reason for anyone to stay in town they will leave town to go shopping elsewhere they'll leave town to go to restaurants elsewhere and we have to have a livable walkable town and to do that we need businesses where people can live and walk to so I think we need to do whatever we can and explore all the different options through the planning department and whatever the select board can do to help that along. It's really not within our purview, but we can encourage other departments. Thank you. Diane? Thanks, James, for the question. Um, I would say that the town can do better. Uh, the town can do different, and we are. I'm, I'm really so proud of our planning department um, that really have gone out. We have uh, Claire Ricker, who's our new planning director, uh, who came from Lowell, who's very well versed not just in housing but in businesses. Um, one of the things I've advocated since I first got on the board was how do we increase business? How do we take advantage of our, our industrial zone? How do we go to flag companies and say to them, we have this site, we can work with you with CDBG funding, with grants from the state, and attract you here to Arlington? And when I first got on the board, the planning department, just purely from a staff um, standpoint just didn't have the people power to do that but they do now we had a restaurant that suffered a fire Tai Moon um, she came before the board uh, on Monday night she's opening back up in Arlington everyone's been waiting for her and her family her, and her family live in Arlington and the town worked with her and got her some grant money so she could go to a new location and be able to reopen that establishment okay. that everyone loves so much thank you and Mrs. Maha just picked up on what I was going to say because it's not only so, attracting new businesses, but it's keeping them. I mean, and, and the work that was done by the department to keep her I thought was audible because they got her a, a loan or something. They helped her out some way economically in order to, yeah, to, to, to keep her. And so it's, it's things like that. It all depends on the kind of businesses that we want. I mean, if we want more retail uh, businesses, I mean, then, then we need more people I mean, to um, be able to shop in those businesses and, and, and make them economically viable. That means more people. I mean, um, and so do we create an environment I mean, in which more people can live in Arlington? I mean, do we want to do biotech, um, fintech? I mean, then we may need to allow I mean, bigger structures I mean, so that I mean, we can have those businesses as well as I mean, the uh, more housing. You know, it really depends on, on what we want. And, and so I really see us I mean, having an opportunity to have that conversation when we talk about I mean, the override, when we talk about I mean, the, the NBA communi communities, because I mean, we then determine I mean, okay. what funds we Sorry have. Sorry to sure. cut you off, sure. but we are going to move on to the next question. And it is for you, Diane. Okay. Two minutes to respond. And the question is, uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's another formulation of the same sort. Do you agree or disagree with the statement, seniors are valued in Arlington? If you agree, please explain how Arlington serves this segment of the population. And if you disagree, please outline the changes you would champion. And please be specific if possible. Seniors are, are definitely valued here in Arlington. They're definitely valued for me, um, my core family. Um, that was sort of the structure, um, grandma, grandpa. Um, were the ones that really had the wisdom and could help guide you through and had the life experience. And I think Arlington recognizes that. Um, we have many, many programs for seniors, but I also recognize there are different kinds of seniors. We have seniors who are in senior housing. We have seniors who are, who are renters um, and living on very limited means. And then we have seniors who own their home. And while some you know, may be comfortable 
in terms of financial planning in the future. Some may be, as they say, house rich and cash poor. And I think the town is doing a great job in terms of taking everybody's different um, living circumstances, status in life, um, to see how Arlington can continue to be the community for them. You know, how can we continue so that if you're a homeowner, um, but you're really live, living on a limited income, do you know about the services through the Council on Aging down at the community center, the former senior center, but now it's a community center. Community's a theme here. You haven't picked it up yet, James, but I know you have. Um, that uh, we get out the programs. I would encourage anyone, senior, uh, disabled, any circumstance to please contact Christine Bongiorno, who's our Health and Human Services Director. She's a great place to start. There's so many programs, and this will probably carry over into some of the other questions. When I talk to seniors, and I would say seven times out of ten, they'd say, you know, here's, here's what I'm facing. You know, it would be really nice if the town if, and I would say, but we are doing that, or we're doing a facet of that, and you're right, we haven't thought about that. Um, and, and that is something that the town staff and myself as a member of the select board really strive to every day to make sure that we're reaching everyone, but especially our seniors. Thank you. Lynn. Yes, well, of course they are. And, and I would love to hear from anyone and who feels that they aren't valued, I mean, senior or otherwise, but especially seniors since that's the, the point of question. And that's a serious you know, request. So anyone watching this, I mean, I mean if you feel that the town isn't valuing you, I mean, then reach out to me because I really would like to know what's behind that question you know, and, or that, that sentiment. You know, uh, it, along with me, Christine Bongiorno, I mean, there's also Christine Shaw I mean, at the Council of Aging who does tremendous work there, I mean, especially with some um, seniors who are having issues with dementia. You know, and, and, and so I had an issue with a, a wonderful town meeting member and, and she told me things I mean, that they are doing to help and gave me some advice. And I'll also close by saying we have an age um, and dementia friendly um, plan that was developed by the Council of Aging. It has a lot of good information and advice in it, so I encourage anyone you know, to check that out online. Uh, Thank you. John. Seniors are an integral part of our community. They're necessary and there's no way that we can't and w act in any way but to value them. Seniors make up a lot of our volunteers for boards, for commissions, for committees. They're also a good part of town meeting. They have a diverse and varied economic and social background as well as educational and their input is necessary for the town to continue to operate the way it did and the way it will and in the future to try and phase out a po portion of our population would just be plain wrong. We must keep them and we value them as we do new residents and younger people and children. We have to value all of our residents in the town and we do provide a lot of services for them and for the seniors as everyone else and should continue to do it as much as we can okay thank you very much <coughs> excuse me <coughs> last question will go to you Len <coughs> <coughs> please provide two or three examples of zoning changes you would support or oppose please be as specific as possible when explaining your reasoning Oh wow! So, so, so it, it, I mean, I, I try my best me, to try to stay away from that because me, zoning really isn't me, um, the select board's um, purview. Me, but but we we do get a chance to me, me support policies me, that come out of zoning. So me, of course, MBT communities. Me, uh, in, in order to become an MBT community, we need to allow three family. Uh, by right, I am fully supportive of that. I mean, and 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 me. And the nice thing is that we are an MBT adjacent community, so that gives us a lot more flexibility I mean, as to where I mean, we can um, change. I me mean, change the zoning to allow for three family by right. I like to see us go beyond that and allow perhaps different structures in different parts of town. I mean, and so in parts of town that maybe can't have apartment buildings. I mean, I would like to see 
them me, be allowed so that, e, especially if they are mixed use, me, so that we can have economic diversity me, um, throughout town. You know, clearly, me, the East has the ability to support uh, more density, me, uh, uh, I think per partly because of the, the nature of the land there, but also because of the population there. Me. But I think we should also me, try to spread out me, um, some of the larger structures me, uh, uh, across town. So I'd like to see zoning changes uh, that would allow that, you know. So that's two. Let's see if I can come up with a third one, you know. No, no, no need. <laughs> okay, all right. I'm sorry, I meant to keep that at two, and please, oh. for the other two of you, that, that will be sufficient. Okay, all right. I oh, apologize. Okay. All right, sure. All right, thanks sure. for that, and I, I hope I didn't cut you off. Well, it's fine. It's totally fine. I apologize. It's, uh, no, no, no. Ciao. No. I would like to see some refinement made to the mixed-use zoning, built, um, which we now have along Mass Ave and Broadway. The mixed-use which we have come up with so far are the amount of commercial space is at a bare minimum so that they can, they can maximize the, sec the third, fourth, and fifth floors for residential. I'm all for the, increasing the density of residential zoning along the main roads and in the town itself we have to come up with additional housing because it's just the right thing to do. But when we make the mixed use, we're eliminating a commercial space, we're going back to the business that we have to continue to maintain. But all the, a few of those buildings they have put in, almost all of them, have little offices that are useless. Or they have well, we're going to put a restaurant in here, but it's not big enough for a viable restaurant. So I think we have to change the mixed-use zoning in order to codify what is acceptable for commercial space. Thank you. Diane? Two zonings. Here we go. I'm going to sort of take a little bit from what um, John and Len have said. MBTA communities, um, it's the law of the land. It's something we have to do. It's, it's Chapter 40, Section 3A. But all we have to do, which is what Arlington is doing right now, is to identify, designate an area where we have zoning so that three family plus units can go in. Sorry, sorry, hand waving at me. Um, so three, three family or more courtyard to get more of a housing stock. But we don't have to build a single unit. We just have to identify that to take that first step. And in terms of the mix, mixed use, that's another thing that I've always been advocating for, especially with remote learning, work bar, job share, um, a mixed use business on the bottom, perhaps second floor, and then third and fourth floor if we can get the zoning um, to have a residential to hopefully make more housing stock available and please more affordable. Okay, thank you, and again, thanks for your patience and understanding. Um, so we are going to now move to that round of questions where you guys are asking them of each other. I will remind you that you have 30 seconds to ask the question, and then both respondents have two minutes, and the person who asked the question has a one-minute rebuttal. So we will start with you, John. Oh, I get to ask first? Mm -hmm. All right. My question concerns the MBTA. We have lost the 79 bus route and the 77 service has been reduced or is about to be reduced. The week after the Green Line extension opened, the MBTA reduced headways to on the Route 80 bus which connects from Arlington Center to the new GLX terminal in Tufts, Medford. Instead of improving connections from Arlington to the GLX, the MBTA is making the connections more difficult. You and have less to ask your question, John. I'm sorry. Is that? You have yeah. to ask the question. I'm sir. about to, James. I had to line it up. Um, and less re reliable. What has the select board done to reverse these failings and what has been done to improve Arlington service? Okay. Diane? Thank you for that question. You're welcome. Um, I think I almost gave it to you. Um, what I've done on the board individually and have done with my colleagues is um, the MBTA assessment is so unfair to Arlington. We pay over three million dollars. Quincy and Braintree um, we pay as much as I believe Quincy and more than Braintree or vice versa. And they have the red line, they have bus routes. Um, as John mentioned, uh, the 79 and the 84 uh, were, eliminated, were eliminated, as well as other bus lines mm -hmm. were, were decreased on. And so to me, it's, it's a, a twofold approach. First is the assessment. Uh, under the law, you can only address the assessment every July. The board, um, 
uh, I've sort of been championing this um, along with Mr. Diggins. We have contacted our state legislative delegation to say, could you write the language that they have to say, it's sort of perfunctory, nobody really goes, it's just on the books, the law is every, if you want a reevaluation, reassessment, it has to happen in January. We, we've started that and we're doing that. And then the, the second uh, approach that we're doing is, um, our chair, Mr. Diggins, is our representative to the MBTA advisory board. So um, he and I are in the process of scheduling a meeting with that chair because we have, again, a unique opportunity. That's the only way. The board really doesn't have any control over this, but I, that does, hasn't stopped me in the past before. Find another way. We have a unique opportunity that we have some other um, towns coming online in our T system, like, don't completely quote me on this, like Acton, Concord, and, and perhaps Carlisle. So that, again, gives us the opportunity, which really hasn't been done before, but it's there and we're going to take it, to go in and say, okay, we want to get reassessed because there's more people, come, more towns coming in, more money to the pot, kind of like the um, solution to say, can we get our assessment down to the services we're getting and then have that meeting with the chair to say, mm -hmm. can we get back to you want MBTA communities, we want our service restored. Okay, thank you, and Len. Yes, thank you. So picking up on Ms. what Ms. Ms. Mahan said, you know, I have been in touch with um, uh, Representative Garberly, and, and I've also been in touch with the, the represent, I'm sorry, the assistant to Mayor Koch of Quincy, who is the chair of the MBTA advisory board, and we are looking into the process that does lead to the reassessments because uh, there is an uh, uh, imbalance mean in the assessments that Arlington is charged versus similar sized communities mean. And so essentially we, we are looking for when that formula is, when the process is going to be reopened to um, change that formula. So so that's in the works. I mean, uh, we're supposed to get back together I mean, um, um, in, in early April. So. It's a process, you know, uh, and and so with respect to the MBTA service, they, they, they have done a bus network redesign, and that has been based on pseudo anonymized cell phone data, where they are looking at the patterns of movement, and they are trying to design a system that fits that pattern of movement better, you know, and so. So they have done an iteration. It has affected Arlington in the, in some opinion, in, in a negative way. The the proof though is in the pudding. I mean, when we see what the results of the usage is, you know, with respect to the 79, you know, you have to do, you have to, you have to make do with the resources that you have. You know, and they they definitely have a shortage of bus drivers. You know, the 79 to a certain extent duplicated. I mean, most of its route was duplicated. I mean, it sure it branched off and went to the alewife. I mean, but but I mean, if you deploy that service either to the 77 or to other parts of the system that need it better, we make the whole system better, and that's the overall goal. Thank Thanks. you, John. As Diane said, we have an annual assessment of three million two hundred thousand plus dollars. Our commuters rely on the MBTA to get to work. We as a town rely on the MBTA to move our students from sixth grade through high school to and from school every day. We as a town want to reduce our carbon footprint and to do that we have to get people out of their cars and into the buses. If the MBTA won't provide us with the buses to have the service we need, we can't achieve those goals. We're paying for the service, we should be getting it, and if the MBTA and the state want us to be an MBTA community, they have to provide us with the service that backs up those commuters and those new residents in the affordable housing we're going to build so that they can use the service that we're paying for. We have to provide for that service. We have to somehow get this MBTA and the state legislature to provide it, whether that's the select board going in and demanding it or some other thing of some sort, we have to go forward with it. Okay, thank you. Um, Diane, your turn to ask a question. I was hoping you'd say that, James. Um, as I mentioned before, climate change and climate resiliency is not unique to Arlington, it's, it's, and it's not unique to one area in Arlington, um, but sort of a long-suffering part of Arlington has been East Arlington. And my question um, to my colleagues would be, um, concerning the Alwife 
Brooks CSO issue. Um, what is your position on that, and what efforts are you willing to support or not support? Okay, we'll start with you, Len. Sure. So, look, the 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 kind of combined sewer overflow I mean is a big problem, you know, and and the MWR has done a. A lot of work already I mean, to to mitigate a lot of the problems there. You know, the remaining problem is going to be particularly expensive uh, to fix. You know, and and me, my understanding, I mean, from some conversations after I mean, a recent select board meeting, is that there are some federal funds uh, out there. You know, and so we need to figure out how to get those funds. I mean, and so. As I tell people who come before the select board with resolutions, I mean, and various things that they want the select board to do to signal support, it's one thing to write a letter. It's an, uh, it's one thing to make a resolution. It's a much more challenging but more more effective thing to find out where the levers of power are and to get them I me mean, to make the change that you want. I mean, so we need to find out I me. Mean, who on the legislature I mean, really wants to see the funds I mean, that we will need from the government, the federal government, distributed in a way that will allow us to, or allow the MWR, whoever is going to make the changes, uh, effect a solution, have, have it such that they can get those funds. I mean, and so I don't know where it is now, you know, uh, but I'm willing to work with the proponents of the bill I mean, to try and find out who that is because you can file a bill me, but if you don't talk to the folks on the committee to which that bill goes, he, then the bill will probably flounder, and it's not enough for us to write a letter. I mean, we actually need to have conversations with the people on uh, that that committee, I mean, primarily I mean, the the the, chief, the staff because they're the ones that can get things done. So, so I'm willing to put that kind of legwork into solving a problem much more so than writing a letter or making a resolution. Thank you. Sure. John, you have two minutes. The combined storage outflow is a huge problem. Um, every time we get high rains, sewage from City of Cambridge flows into Elwife Brook, which directly affects the East Arlington neighborhoods along Lafayette and, some, and Sunnyside Avenue. That's people's backyards. The uh, efforts so far have been minimal in the part of Cambridge. If we cannot get them to voluntarily do it, I would go as far as to sue them, frankly. It's like the Environmental Defense Fund had to sue the MBTA to get them to build a Green Line extension. Sometimes it takes a judge order to make someone do something. If we can't get the legislature to act, we, may, we have to take some strong actions and get those, to get the sewage out of Elwife Brook. And it flows from Elwife Brook into the Mystic Lakes and into the Mystic River, I'm sorry, and then right down through Medford, we could probably get the city of Medford to go along with it because no one wants pollution in their, in their rivers, in their lakes, and it's just got to be done with. It's, yes, work with the legislator, see if we can find out who the right person is, see if there's any money from the federal government that can help, but in the end, if none of that works, we may have to resort to the courts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Diane, one minute. And, and thank you to Len and John for recommitting to the Alwife CSO issue. Um, I agree with Len that just writing a letter isn't enough. So first and foremost, if you want to get involved in this issue, there's a neighborhood group called uh, Save the Alwife Brook, S-T-A-B. Uh, Kristen Anderson and, and David White, who also uh, works in the town, are co-chairing that. I have been attending with uh, our town council, some of my colleagues, uh, planning department, there's meetings going on right now on Zoom, and you can go on the town website to find the link to go on to that. More Arlington residents, the bigger voice we have, um, where MWRA is mandated by law to have these meetings. The city of Somerville and city of Cambridge are there. Uh, it's the beginning planning process. We could sue, but we honestly wouldn't get anywhere. It's a Class B waterway under the federal government. Um, the city of Boston is still um, dealing with all their waterways. My, ultimately, get, we need to get the sewage out of the brook and out of people's homes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you very much. And last question of this round is yours. Sure. Thank you. So Arlington is part of the Boston region, I mean, and according to the MPO, the Boston Metropolitan Region, Metropolitan Planning Organization, that is 100, 100 and 
uh, for communities. I mean, Arlington has a good reputation I mean, um, uh, in the region. What would you do to increase or at least maintain Arlington's position of leadership in the region? Oh, okay. Um, Arlington is one of the larger towns population-wise. We have the second densest town, and we're the, within the top ten. So we have a position of, of moral authority through uh, and because we are a well-run town. Now, how would we increase or keep it? We would. Uh, it's, how do you do, ever do that? You just. Um, continue to do. We had Adam Chapdelaine as the president. If we get Annette, another town manager who wants to do that and join the staff, he could do that. She could do that. But you, you maintain that by participating in regional activities, regional programs, regional policies, and not be a, a I want to say a stick in the mud. You can't be a, a town or met, municipality that is always trying to fight everything. You have to work with your neighbors. So that's what Arlington could do to increase our, our uh, good feeling out there. I mean, it's, you already have it. It's a matter of maintaining it as opposed to increasing it. Okay, thank you. Diane, two minutes. And, and the question was, talk about Arlington as a region and how we can how, benefit from that. Talk about Arlington's leadership Arlington's and how leadership. we can, yeah, mm -hmm. in the um, Arlington, similar to the residents in town, similar to our town employees, um, Arlington in terms of town hall, especially with the MPO and other various organizations, has really been a leader in terms of not only establishing what the town of Arlington is and what the community is, but when we, we're taking those next steps on how do we move, how do we change, how do we keep what works, and, and incorporated into there and the biggest thing is because Arlington is I think Arlington and Brookline are sort of the premier towns in the state um, in, in, in terms of uh, living working in Arlington so in terms of being a leader in the region which we've we've already started to do and sometimes we've done it through opera funding um, which is only limited um, but through the MPO, through the MMA, lots of acronyms, I'd say, s s sound them out, but I'm going to lose some of my time on that, is to look for regional opportunities where we can, uh, sometimes we can apply for a grant solely on our own status of Arlington and what we're doing there. But thankfully we have a staff in the planning department and elsewhere that because of all these different acronyms and letter groups that we're also a leader and member of, that um, we're able to apply for grants uh, take initiatives and programs. We have um, begun, you know, with the uh, town of Belmont, the town of Winchester, city of Cambridge, city of Somerville, on different issues that are important to the town of Arlington in terms of planning. Um, we've come together for the benefit of our communities to have a better chance to be successful, whether it's the actual project that we're trying to build or whether it's the funding that we're trying to get, whether it's the type of department that we can't justify alone, but we can justify the need for it. So we do a lot of those department sharings, especially with Belmont and Winchester. And, and we'll continue to do that, thanks to our great town staff. Thank you. One minute. Arlington has a lot of goodwill in the, in the region because Arlington realizes that the all a uh, rising tide lifts all boats and, and and if Arlington is to do well the region has to do well and and through the select board me which has a big influence me on what happens with respect to transportation and, and and also the executive of the select board the chair has a seat on the Boston region MPO and Arlington now actually has a, a seat itself because it's been elected uh, as the inner core as actually one of the the, um, the at large towns, I mean, we have a big role that we can play on the MPO in order to make sure that there are plans I mean, that will positively affect Arlington. But more importantly, I mean, I mean, I mean, Arlington I mean, looks out for other communities, I mean, and it's often by making others' priorities I mean, higher I mean, that you become a leader. I mean, and, 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 and Sorry, got to cut you off there. Apologize yes, for that. 
Um, and that actually ends the questions. And we are all of a sudden at closing statements already. So uh, with a reminder that they are one minute each and that the order will be John and then Len and then Diane. We will start with you, John. Good evening. Um, as I stated, my concerns are the short-term and long-term policy decisions facing the board in our town. As I stated, I'll bring an energy and direction of purpose to the select board that is needed at this time. I have been and will continue to be, with your vote, a listener, a friend, and a voice for all Arlington residents. As we work together to make Arlington the best it can be, the first step is to get out and vote on Saturday, April 1st. I respectfully ask for one of your votes. Thank you, I'm John Leone. Thank you. Glenn. Thanks again to HCMI for this opportunity. It has been a brief time and we've only scratched the surface. For those of you who know me, you have a good sense that I have a wide breadth of interest as well as an increasing depth of knowledge fueled by my passion for learning that gives me the ability to connect ideas and concepts in creative ways. Sure, I have my own ideas, but I work best when presented with your ideas because inherently that means we will be collaborating. I thrive on collaboration and I am energized by the prospect of doing more. Issues abound. There will always be issues, some expected, some not expected. What you can expect from me is someone who will stay calm, who will not jump to conclusions, and who will not jump to conclusions. You can also expect someone who is willing to make tough decisions and who is not afraid of trying novel solutions. I respectfully ask for one of your two votes for select board. A vote for me is a vote for someone who is engaged, determined, and innovative. Thank you for taking your time to participate in our local election this spring. Thank you. Diane. And thank you, James. And thank you, ACMI, for doing this. I've been a longtime advocate supporter, and uh, you prove every day, every week that that was well deserved. Um, I hope you got a glimpse a little bit of what John, Len, and I hope to bring to the board. Um, I hope you, you have gotten from me um, that I love Arlington, and I hope to continue working on all the issues that we've discussed and a lot more that we, we haven't discussed. And I really encourage you to go on to ACMI and look up the candidate profiles for the select board. If you'd like to hear a little bit more about us, about school committee candidates, and other um, elected officials that appear on there. Um, I want you to know, I truly feel that I, the importance of civic engagement in town government to strengthen our town as well as working together with uh, my colleagues, our town employees, and you, the residents of Arlington, gives us this great community that we all know and love. So I hope I've earned one of your two votes on Saturday, April 1st, or if you start early voting on Saturday, March 25th, Diane and Mahan. Thank you so much. Take care. And thank you thank to you, the James. three of you yeah. very much. Um, wealth of experience and wisdom in this room, I have to say. And uh, we'll be lucky that two of you will take seats on the select board. Um, that will conclude tonight's debate. Uh, it is, of course, the debate for the select board. And the candidates, one more time, Len Diggins and John Leone. Thank you. And Diane Mahan. We thank them very much for their service, for running, period. Thank you so much for that and we appreciate that. They've already told you several times, it is April 1st, that is uh, election day, and as Diane was mentioning, uh, the Saturday before that, that begins this coming Saturday. So uh, do exercise your rights, please, and uh, we thank the candidates, we thank you for tuning in. I'm James Milan, we'll see you another time.